Shalom again, and we're going to continue with our Purim, our timely Purim lesson. As we already mentioned, Purim refers to the dice, all right? Purim. Pur refers to the dice. Now, we've touched on some of the elements of Purim, seeing that now there's a, there's a drum roll for um, war going on, but the Moshiach, you understand, the true Messiah, the true Joshua, Yeshua, he, he warned us. You see, and this is what separates us from other so-called um, Jews or those who call themselves Jews, that we as Ethiopian Hebrews, as Beit Israel and Let Rastafari, we accept the true Moshiach, the true Moshiach, Joshua, Joshua or Yahshua, Yeshua. You understand our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christos, Jesus Christ. And because of that, we are in his testimony. And see, his testimony is his word. His word is called the Logos. And the Logos is the logic. And see, the logic is the key. There's a program that we caught a couple of um, glimpses of, and it's concerning the Dead Sea Scrolls. And there's lots that have been talked about with the Dead Sea Scrolls, and hopefully we'll get to touch on that particular subject matter as well. Now, the Dead Sea Scrolls were discovered by a so-called Bedouin in, in 1947. Now, it's interesting that year, 1947, especially when the half of the story is once again put in its true historical context. As Kedamawi Haile Selassie said, as our godfather said, he said that, he said that God and history will judge. Now, he is Christ in his kingly character. He is the Moshiach. He is the one upon the throne of King David. Now, there's a lot of confusion among so-called um, uh, placebo Christians or caliphate Christians or so-called Christians concerning Hala Selassie because they don't know of Ethiopia because they have been misinformed and misdirected concerning the Ethiopian testimony. And even many Ethiopians themselves are those careless Ethiopians, similar to the Jews during the time of the Moshiach, during the time of Joshua. And this is one of the reasons why the whole um, Kur Kuram, um, the the insurgency against the Romans, this is one of the reasons why it failed. Although they had many keys, although they, they, were, they were precise on many things, the main thing is that they had rejected the Moshiach. See, this is 70 A.D. Now, 70 A.D. in our black Hebrew or, or, or um, Hebrew Israelite or black Hebrew Israelite, there's different ways that it's, it's qualified in the world. We stick to what our brother, Rabbi Wentworth Arthur Matthew, Matthews, who was the head of the diaspora Ethiopian Hebrews. You understand? What, what he qualified it as was we are, we are, we are black um, 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 Israelites, or we're, we're Israel, black Israel, but more precisely, he said Ethiopian Hebrews. So Ethiopian Hebrews is the, the ideal um, hyphenated, albeit, qualification of who we are. But now the election that the Bible speaks of is Rastafari. The election is Rastafari. Now, speaking of Purim, let's, let's touch on this and y'all willing, y'all willing, I and I live, we'll touch on this and that and the next matter as well. But let's touch on this right here because we have some notes up here. Mm -hmm. Here we say Purim, right, equals dice. Purim equals dice. And the dice are the lots. These are the lots. These are, these are the dice, right? Now, why is that significant? Now, we're going to have to take some of the information that we put up there previously off, the whole link with Persia and Iran. That's in Daniel's Menetekel Ufarisen, Daniel chapter 5. 525 or 525 with Perez, right? Or Persia. Now, something interesting actually comes out of this as well. A, a few interesting points because people will say, well, why is, is, is this significant for us? 
Well, first of all, you know there was an Ethiopian queen who was named Esther as well, or Astia. Astia. And if we look at our notes right here, we see that Astia, right, or Esther means star. Astia. Now, in English, you might call it, uh, this is actually Astia, like Astia Astirawaka, and then we have uh, Asterix, right? Uh, asterix. And an asterix usually is something like this, right? Usually they have an asterix looking a little bit like that. Now, why is a star significant with, with Astia? Star. Because Purim with Queen Esther, it links with what we call the eighth, the eighth millennial star, right? The eighth millennial star is called a Kokeb. Now, what is a Kokeb? Kokeb Bamarinya in the Amharic, in the royal language of Amharic, in our pure language, means star. So there's a star of the eighth millennium. In the eighth millennium, what is the year for us as Ethiopian Hebrews? This pr present year, 2012, is 7,504. 7,504. So let's put this right here. 7,504, right? After September 11th, it will turn to 7,505 since the creation. We call this EC, right? EC for the Ethiopian calendar or the Ethiopian calculation of time, the half of the story that ones have not been told. So there is the eighth millennial, the eighth mill star, or the eighth millennial Kokeb. Where can we put Kokeb right here? Let's put the Kokeb right here. Um, Kokeb, right? Now in the Hebrew, they will say Kokav, Kokav. Now, in Amharic star is just generic. Basically, Kokeb is used for any kind of star, but since this is a very old, come from a very old manuscript, the Aude Negest, the Aude Negest, and Aude means like a, a, an, an orbit, Aude Negest, and Negest, right, is some say Nagast. Nagast means kings. We have two other books, Ethiopic books, that are very important, and we've touched on them in our teaching, and they're very essential to our studies. One is the, the Kubra Negest, or the Kubra Nagast, some say. Another one is the Sitha, the Sitha Nagast. Um, now, the Kubra Nagast is, the, is called the Queen of Sheba and her only son Minulik. The Queen of Sheba and only son Minulik. Now, in European um, um, anthropology, archaeology, and other sort of studies, no doubt you know that they have been looking for the Queen of Sheba, where was she from? Was she from Yemen in the tip of the Arabian Peninsula, or was she from Ethiopia? They've been looking into this particular subject matter. We should be looking into this much more ourselves. So we must begin with the logic, the logos. Begin with the word. And this means begin with the scriptures and begin with the teachings. So we have another document called the Kivra, or called the Ikrta, called the Auda Negest. The Auda Negest, and the Auda Negest is known as the orbit of the kings. And in this document, it has a description of a star, of a Kokeb, right? And this particular Kokeb's description is one and the same as what you might have, have heard of before as, and we'll write this in red right here, as the Nibiru. Now, this is for a question mark right here. Because some say that, and from, from our own um, preview of um, portions of this document, the Auda Neges, it does appear that the description of the eighth millennial star, or Astir, see, Astir, Astir now, it, here's where the languages and the linguistics meet, and here's where we have a codification of it in the Ethiopic. The Astir is a star. So Esther, Queen Esther, 
Now, Queen Esther is linked with the Purim, or the dice, or the lots. But let us understand the metaphysical, the metaphysical, the mystical link that's the background of this. And the document called the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary is where, where we're going to begin looking into Pur and Purim. What's the connection with dice? This is March 8th, 2012, which is the Purim for this particular, this particular year in 2012. So there's a, there's a great significance as it will explain more of the 2012 facts, factors, and also help us to go through the confusion of the hype. There's a lot of hype circulating around 2012. So rolling the dice. So how does the dice look? Mm -hmm. Let's let's now get into get into the metaphysical Bible dictionary. And we didn't include this previously. I think it's it's important to, to include now. So this is metaphysical Bible dictionary. We have a PDF, a downloadable at our website, www.loj Society. So if ones want to follow up on it and do some of their own studies, there's a free P PDF at our website. Mm -hmm. Now, we're speaking about Esther in the Bible, but we're also speaking about the Ethiopian Esther. But in order to understand the significance of the Ethiopian Esther, we have to first of all go to the Bible, and here we have to deal with Purim. Purim, 2012, 8th millennial star, Kokav, Nibiru, what's the link, what's the connection? The key is how are the dice rolled? The dice? What do you mean the dice? That's gambling. Well, pur, four means dice, a lot. So here let's look into the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary and get a basic understanding of the word and the mystical or metaphysical, or really the initiate. You see, this is going beyond um, superficial Christianity, superficial Judaism, so forth and so on. It's the half of the story that hasn't been told. And this is the revelation. This is another, another ray of light of the revelation of Rastafari. Now, poor, poor singular, poor, P-U-R, poor singular, Right? And then you have Purim, which is plural. So this is actually the Hebrew. This is Hebrew, but it's from the Persian. It's Hebrew, but it's from, we can say, the ancient Iranian. How ironic this is. Because Haman wasn't, well, we're going a little bit ahead of ourselves, but those of you who understand who Haman was, and Haman was that, was that, that threatening character. So Purim refers to the casting of lots. All right, it refers to the the casting of lots, right? The gamble. See, Babylon is making a big gamble, and many are making a big gamble not coming out of Babylon, not coming out spiritually out of Babylon, Babylonian so-called religions, or Babylonian placebo faith. You understand a lot of the placebo Christianity, placebo Judaism, and even placebo Islam, not coming out of these placebo religions. What's a, what's a placebo? Look it up if you don't know and make that connection. But poor, it refers to the casting of lots, as well as the consulting of astrologers. Now, recently, you might note, we posted a video to um, reply to a false accusation that we were dealing with astrology because we pointed to the, the gap or the rift between in, in the heavens between Sagittarius and between Scorpio. So we went over that again and said, all right, let us put this in biblical terminology so you'll recognize that what we're dealing with is not so-called pseudo-astrology, but it's actually the science the science of the Bible. So we, we rename Sagittarius, which is the Greco-Roman, Western, white, European, so-called, quote, unquote, astrology. We said, actually, the 12 tribes, 12 constellations, 12 signs, that sign known as Sagittarius would more properly be Don, the tribe of Don. And then um, Scorpio would actually be um, 
um, actually, Sagittarius would be God, God, the tribe of Gad or God. And it's Scorpio that would be Don, because Don is like a serpent or a scorpion in the way. So let's call it Gad and Don instead of calling it Sagittarius and Scorpio. All right? Now, poor, actually, this so-called Jewish holiday, which is not really a holiday in the same sense for us as Ethiopian Hebrews. We know that there is a queen that delivered us, Hadasha, her name as our sister, or as an Israelite, a black Hebrew woman and lady, Imabate, but then she's also called Astir, and Astir, also the Hebrew from the Persian, means a star. But then we're now linking this star, which is in the English asterisk, with, remember, asterisk, is it really a star or is it a particular conjunction? Asterisk is a particular conjunction. If what they tell us is true and correct, then December 21st, 2012, would be a particular conjunction that is symbolized by what we know as the asterisk, but links with aster, the English Esther, and the story begins in Purim. So let's continue with Purim. So Purim, it refers to the casting of lots or the casting of dice. Pur means a part. It means a portion, a lot, a die, really a dice, or an oracle. Because depending on how the, the dice was thrown, they would read the dice, and that would present to them a particular oracle. For them, it was the word of a god or their god or certain demons that they worshipped as gods. Now, Paul refers to the casting of lots and the consulting of astrologers by Haman the Agagite. Haman the Agagite. Last year we touched on Gaddafi, and we linked him with our own so-called Haman in that equation. How everything summed up in Libya fulfilled that particular word. That word there was fulfilled. So now we move to this year where the big talk is Iran and attacking Iran, the so-called Jewish state of Israel or the white Ashkenazi Jews and the Americans attacking Iran to stop them from gaining a nuclear, you know, nuclear um, weapon and nuclear, bomb, nuclear war against Israel, so forth. That's the, that's the narrative that's in the media right now. And we explore that in light of Daniel's prophecy. Because we said that if they are working on this, as we um, bethink they be working on this, then it it's, might lead to a miscalculation. His Majesty warned us of miscalculation. We can see even with the Qurum or the Qumram community or the Essenes and the so-called Jewish wars, and certain so-called messianic speculations that they also miscalculated and they had missed Joshua. They had missed the Moshia. Why? Because it wasn't the, that, that Christ or Jesus Christ, Joshua, did not fulfill their preconceived notions in the same way that they had missed Haile Selassie I for the very same reasons because his imperial majesty did not fit their so-called preconceived notions of the Messiah or the return of Jesus. But that does not mean that he is not true, just like the Jews failing to defeat the Romans in 70 AD did not prove that Jesus Christ or Yeshua HaMoshiach, our black Lord and Savior, was untrue, but it proves that they had misinterpreted God's word and therefore God's signs. So in this prophetic time, we must be very diligent and careful to scrutinize all the data and all the facts and do the math correctly so we do not be like they. So we have a very important lesson. Biblically, 2,000 years ago, the so-called Jews and Jesus 2,000 years scrolling forward, the careless Ethiopians, the world, and Haile Selassie I. 
So let us keep that in mind. So Haman, he consulted with astrologers, magicians, sorcerers, and the Chaldeans um, concerning the Jews or the black Jews who were in Persia. You understand? So Haman was the enemy of the Jews. Against the Jews, he was, and he sought to destroy the Jews, just like many seek to destroy black people, especially black people in the Americas and the Caribbean. Brothers and sisters, we are like the Jews were during the time of the Holocaust and those wars. Make no mistake about it. Make no mistake about it. We're not in so-called post-racial times because racism is still the, the, the gorilla, so to speak, in the room. It still has not been dealt with. And speaking of gorilla, we just saw part of Planet of the Apes, um, the Planet of the Apes movie, and it's kind of interesting when you think about. It, but that's a whole, that's a whole other, um, that's a whole other matter. So, in Esther chapter three and seven, and in Esther chapter nine and twenty-four, you will find poor. Poor would be one. One dice would be poor, and poorim would be dice. You understand? It would be more than one dice, whether two, three, or even more. Um, dice. So, Purim is the name of a Jewish of a Jewish festival. Purim is the name of a Jewish festival. It's not a Hebrew high holy day. It was not commanded by Yahweh. It was not commanded by Jah, but it was a a memorial of a deliverance of Jah's people in such a time. So let's make that distinction. It's not a high holy day. You understand? Know it's not one of our three or seven high holy days that were commanded by John for his people, but it is a commemoration which gives, gives somewhat indirectly in modern Judaism, but more directly in the Bible, which gives the praise to God through the act of a righteous daughter of Israel, daughter of Zion, through Queen Esther or Sister Hadassah or Hadasha. So let us make that clear. Purim is the name of a Jewish festival which was instituted by the Jews in remembrance of their deliverance from the destructive devices of the wicked Haman. Of the wicked Haman. Now Purim, as we said, is the plural of poor. Esther chapter 9, verses 26 to 28. Now, the metaphysical of this is, is, is quite revealing. When we now look at the metaphysical Bible dictionary, we looked at it before, but in our previous two programs on this subject matter, we, 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 we didn't look at it or we didn't refer to it in the, in the program. Afterward, we said, let's just look, up, um, look it up again. You know, we understand the basic meaning, but let's just check that out. When we checked this out, it was so interesting that we said we had to record this right here. It, it was important that we record this, and thus we do. So metaphysically, metaphysically poor, you understand, poor, a dice, you understand, it refers to superstitious belief in and a fear of fate, a fear of luck and astrological and psychic influences as having power for evil in one's life. So, what Haman was doing in, in consulting with the astrologers and in rolling the dice, this is what's interesting, what he was doing in rolling the dice was expressing a superstitious belief, a superstitious fear in and a faith, a fear in, and and, and 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 a belief in, and a fear of fate. It's similar to the world that we live in today. There is a fear of the future, especially amongst those who are invested in the old system and seclurum. So much so that they are, they are, they they are 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 aggressively developing a so-called new world order. You understand where they can maintain 
their illegitimate rule over Beta Israel, over us, the once lost but now found Beta Israel, over the root peoples, the black and Asian peoples, and ultimately over, over the world. And we're speaking of our enemy, you understand, know which is white supremacy. But that white supremacy is powered by Satan, is powered by the dragon, is powered by Diablos, is powered by evil. So now I want you to put together, if you, if you may, and if you are able to, the link between Purim, you understand, and the link in 2012 right now. So there, there, there's a connection here. Because what Port now describes, since Port is so intimately connected with Dice, you see what I'm saying? And Dice is intimately connected with a, a sense of gambling. Now, historically, we know that Nero, the Roman Emperor Nero, and Nero, here's what's interesting, Nero was likened to the, the chi Stai stigma. In other words, he was likened to 666, his name... Caesar, Kaiser, was looked at in that Revelation 13 and 18. Ones were looking at, well, if this is a man, let us look for a particular individualized man who fulfills that. So they found a narrow, narrow Caesar, you understand, and an and opportunity and an expression of the likeness of Revelation chapter 13, verse 16. But when Rome burnt, when Rome burned, history tells us and teaches us that Nero, he was rolling the dice. So while Rome burned, but what did he do? What did he do after Rome burned? He blamed it on this, this new group, this new religious group, which they labeled back then, even back then they labeled as a cult. This religious group that believed in one God, one God and Father, of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And, and this Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMoshiach, was regarded to be the true Son of God, not the Roman emperors, not the Khazarian or Caesarian family, you understand? Not the uh, Roman gods or whatever, Greco-Roman whitewashed gods, but this black man, one who was actually vis-a-vis -vis the politics, similar to how black people are vis-a-vis -vis the politics. So if we look at the Bible and look at the Jews as an oppressed people, they are oppressed in the very same way by the Roman Empire that black people are oppressed by white supremacy, especially the black so-called slaves, the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And this is all biblical. This is all prophetic. You see, but this is not the narrative of the world. That's why most people who have accepted falsely or presumptuously the world's narrative would reject this, but not be able to point the facts, to, 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 to dispute the facts and the evidence, but they would present the false narrative because they already believe in that, such as purim, pur refers, I know it's pur, the word pur, P-U-R. It sounds like pur, doesn't it? Poor. Bamarinya, and even in the ancient Persian, it was actually four. Four. It was pronounced not with the P sound, according to the later Ezra um, repointing of the Hebrew. And so it's, 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 it's pe, it's a pu sound instead of a fu. So now we say it as poor, but then it was said as four. So purim was originally fourim, and we know that from the pure language of Kedemawi Haile Selassie and from the Metzhaf Kedus, the Book of the Seven Seals, His Majesty's Bible. But let's go with what we're told, because the revelation is going to reveal to us what is. So we call it pur, you understand? We call it pur, singular. And the pur singular is an individualized dice. Now, the dice refers to what? Superstitious belief in and a fear of fate, a fear of luck, and astrological and psychic influences as having power for evil in one's lives. This is similar to what plenty of folks go through because they believe and they read the signs, the horoscope, so forth and so on. If it says, well, 
don't go outside, don't do this, don't do that. They are controlled by this belief in these, these, um, these powers or whatever as having some real power for evil in one's life. Now, such error ideas, these, this is error ideas, this is error programming, and much of it has already been pre-programmed in the society that we're in. So many of us have been born into a world of sin. And the world of sin that we're born into is we're born into this world of superstitious belief in and a fear of fate, a fear of luck, a fear of astrological and psychic influences as having the a power of evil in one's life. And you can extend that to the Luna Nutty cult and to a lot of their superstitious beliefs as well, which all basically connects with this particular this particular um, um, point of view right here. These are error ideas, and these fears, they belong to the adverse consciousness. What is the adverse consciousness? Adverse. If we go to the Hebrew, the word that we can put there for adverse consciousness is satanic. Satanic consciousness and the satanic mind, it is adverse to the true God and Father of our black Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This is why they reject that in spite of the evidence. So those, those, that adverse consciousness, if it's indulged in, and it has been indulged in, in this society, in this, quote, seclorum, in this so-called world system, and we all have, have been affected, effected or affected more or less by it, but if it's indulged in, they're destructive, not constructive, but is destructive to one's spiritual upbuilding and unfoldment. This is why many of y'all, you know, being so overwhelmed by all this, um, all this fear and hype of the New World Order, the Luna Nutty, you know, they, they control everything. Nothing you can do about it. This is how the future is going to be. And they're going to do this. And, go, and there's nothing that people can do about it. Because of that, you understand? Because of that, their own spiritual upbuilding and unfoldment. You see, the, the two parts. One, one has to be built up spiritually in, in truth. And one has to also unfold. It's like we say one has to learn before they do. You know what I'm saying? Get informed and then get involved. Just don't get involved if you're not properly informed. That is part of the problem and not the solution. Yes, ones need to get involved, but ones first need to get informed. Yes, we need to do the will of God in Christ, but we need to be properly informed, need the logic, need the information so that we can be in the proper formation and part of the formula or solution instead of unwitting part of the problem or continuing the problem, you know what I'm saying, even with good intentions. You see what I'm saying? The, the old saying about good intentions um, lead to hell and so forth and so on in this context also is, 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 is apropos or is, is true. Now, porin, plural. It symbolizes as, 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 a, as a holy day or as, a, as a, a, a memorial, a holy memorial, or as a remembrance, can we say. It symbolizes the great joy and the new hold, and the new hold on spiritual life and substance. Spiritual life and substance. You see, the world we live in, the seclorum we live in now, puts substance before life. It puts substance before spirituality. And this is why so many of us, one way or the other, have been affected adversely by substance and substance abuse or material and materialism and have lost track of true spirituality, being rooted and grounded in truth. So pouring it symbolizes the great joy and the new hold on spiritual life and substance that the overcomer, key word there, the overcomer, you see, overcomer. Blessed are those who overcome, not those who are overcome. 
So, so, so the, the overcomer realizes by means of his deliverance from the superstitious fears. See, there are superstitious fears that poor represents, that rolling the dice represents. But rolling the dice, and these dice, as I use these dice in this series right here, as a as a a a a a, a kind of a symbolic representation. You see, this is a symbolic representation of what? Let's go back to the top. Poor refers to superstitious beliefs. So this may be a symbol, right? These may be the symbols, right? But behind these symbols there's a consciousness or there's an idea which must be digested and understood consciously. And what is that idea? Superstitious belief in. And fear of fate, a fear of luck, a fear of life, a fear of the future that one would consult with astrological and psychic means in order to, 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 to get some control of Life, in other words, in a sense, it's like trying to God God on a level. You see, this does not mean that psychic, psychic is your soul. You see, psychic refers to the soul. Christ, the Moshiach, he came to save our souls, our psyches. You see, there's so many people in this present world that are psychologically destroyed, and then they give them the drugs, and then, and, you know, it's... it's that's the confusion that we're dealing with. But then the Bible already said, the Bible labels in the New Testament sorcery as pharmakesis. And pharmakesis is pharmaceuticals. And people take pharmaceuticals usually, you understand, for psychic or mental imbalances or maladjustments in this evil world. You see, and then the next set, believe in things like fear and luck, you understand, and fate, and have to roll the dot, you know, like lottery, a lot of these things are just extensions of that Haman consciousness. So what is important in the story of Queen Esther, and as a balance to this, we're going to look up Esther for a moment, as a balance to poor, because it's positive to overstanding, but we, we want to first of all speak about the the individual, because in every great event in life, there's always an individual who we must identify with that, that event, positive or even negative. You know what I'm saying? So when we look at, say, World War II, we're looking at certain key individuals, you understand, who, 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 who represent that history. So it's impossible just to look at all the so-called ants. You know what I mean? You have to look at one individual amongst all the ants and recognize the significance of that individual in, in being a symbol of their generation. So when we talk about Whitney Houston, death of Whitney Houston, we say, wow, this is the, this is the death of a generation. She is a symbol for a generation because what, what affected her the, the other lost sheep are going through the same thing. And if they don't get it, they're going to have a fate similar to or in the end just like her because she's a symbol of her generation. But now Esther, Esther, Aster, 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 link with Aster, Asterix, Star, or Kokeb, possibly Nibiru, and according to the Aude Negist, which speaks of it as the eighth millennial star. This is the year that we're in right now, 2012. You understand? So this links right here. Let us put this here so you can. Um, this links with 2012, right? This is 2012, Ethiopically speaking. So that means in the West, they are dealing with about 2,012 years of civilization. From an Ethiopic perspective, we're speaking of at least 7,504, soon to be 7,505. Now, speaking of Esther, Esther, her name 
Now, here's what's interesting. What does Esther, Esther's name mean? Well, simply, it means a star. But we know that God is in the details, right? So if we get beyond just star, well, we find the planet Venus. Esther links with the planet Venus. So Aster star, which star are we talking about? Now we begin to understand that we are speaking about the star that is known as Venus. Now we can go into this very much, or the morning star, right? This is the morning star, you know, also linked with so-called Lucifer in, in some Eurocentric uh, traditions and disciplines. But let's go further. Esther means, Aster means happiness. Aster means good fortune. Now, fortune, fortuna. This is what's interesting. If you go to, um, I hope we have enough time to get into this right here. But, you know, I like to, I like to give you certain important references, even if I'm only able to note them briefly, so that ones can check it out for themselves. Let me get the, so if you look right here, you will see in, in Isaiah chapter 65, Isaiah chapter 65, verse 11, it says this, But ye, but ye are they that forsake the Lord. Ye are they who forsake Jah. You forsake Yahweh. You forsake Jah, Rastafari, that forget my holy mountain, holy Mount Sion, the African Zion, that prepare a table for that troop. Now, if you look into the Hebrew, the Hebraic, and you study this first, troop would be Gad. You remember we mentioned how Sagittarius, you understand? That troop, Sagittarius represents Gad, and, 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 and Scorpio represents the tribe of Don in the heavens, as above, so below, Genesis 1, verse 14. Otherwise, we won't know what time it is. And this is what is wrong with this generation right now. We have watches and clocks and computers, but they all are orientated. You, you see, we're, we're, we're disorientated. It's orientated to a little town in England known as Greenwich. So we're living by artificial false time. But they themselves study the stars, study the heavens. Why? Because it keeps them ahead while they have us looking down here on earth and caught up in a man-made so-called reality called the seclorum or the world. But the Bible tells us that it's the end of the seclorum, not the end of earth and creation per se, but the end of this world system, this way of doing things. And these are all linked with the heavens. You see, this, these are all linked with the heavens. No matter how they talk about global warming, the ecology, so forth and so on, we keep seeing these signs happening. You see, but we also are seeing false signs too. See, false signs, some of these things we see happening, even in the weather and the environment, are, I would not say man-made, but they are caused by um, the accomplices of Satan on certain men and people experimenting you know saying, with certain knowledge that if they use it for life, it would improve life for human beings, but they use it for death and destruction because they get these sciences, you know saying, from the father of all lies, Satan, our adversary. So when we look at Haman, Haman was just the individual. You know what I'm saying? He was just a representative, like looking at Hitler or looking at Mussolini. These are just the individuals, you know what I'm saying? who Satan or Satana uses, and then we have, you know, then we have, have um, the death and destruction, but we can link it with these important individuals. But then when those who oppose these individuals, see, we always hear about Mussolini, you know what I'm saying? We always hear about um, Hitler. Then the opposite, we hear about Churchill, or we hear about MacArthur, or we hear about Eisenhower. We never hear about Haile Selassie the first. You understand? We never hear the half of the story that hasn't been told. But just because the half of the story is not told doesn't mean that we don't need that half of the story to be full and whole and complete. You understand? Just because you suppress part of the story, you can only go but so far. 
with what half cocked, as they say. And unfortunately, that's the situation. But here it says about preparing a table for that troop. Troop is Gad. And that furnish uh, the drink offering, the drink offering, notice, to that number, the drink offering. You remember Belshazzar? Belshazzar and, and his, his guests who decided to drink out of the gold and silver um, um, vessels of the tabernacle during the Babylonian captivity of the tribe of Judah, that when the handwriting wrote on the wall and Donnell was, was asked to in, read it and interpret it, he read it, Mena. Mena is this very same one that we find in Isaiah 65, 65 and 11. Yes, 11. You could go into that number if you want to. But, but, but getting into this verse that is numbered 11, we find Gad and Mena. So we have part of the prophecy, part of the prophecy that links with, for example, the Sagittarius constellation, 2012 and all that. And then we have the drink offering to that number, and Daniel spoke of the Menetekel Upharisen. He was speaking, and that was sealed up. Remember that in Daniel's prophecy, says that these things are sealed up to the time of the end, the end of this cycle, the end of this seclural. But the media is saying, hey, it is, there's been these prophecies at all time. Just, 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 just can go to work and shop, go out and party and play, and we'll tell you what the weather's going to be like tomorrow, but they're not really giving people the real significance to get their, their heads and their hearts in order. And that is contributing to the exasperation of this time of change. You know Because people have been misdirected and, 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 and disorientated from the real purpose of, of life and asking themselves the key question, what is life, or who am I, what is life, why am I here? What am I supposed to be doing? Really, because they don't ask those questions, and, and the seclorum, the Gentile world system, don't really want people. They'll tell you, you're a worker, you're number so-and-so, you're supposed to move that lever, you're a cog in the wheel. You understand? That makes, makes the, 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 the um, you know, the rich, so-called, richer. You know what I mean? Why every time they discover a new technology, they say that this will, this will put a chicken in everybody's pot. And then they say, well, we got a chicken for everybody's pot, but the price is more than people can pay for it. Almost like the price came down from heaven. No, it's men and people that set these things. So it's men and people ultimately, as Sizzler says in one of his songs, is like, is like we are responsible for this. You understand? I mean, it's human beings. You know, it's men and people. You understand? Even us as the lost sheep of the Beit Israel, we are also responsible for a lot of this that's going on right here. Hopefully ones will get this. But Esther, Esther means a star, but it refers to the planet Venus, happiness, good fortune. She was a beautiful Israelitish woman who became the queen of King Ahasuerus or Artexis, um, Xerxes, in other words, of Persia. Um, Esther chapter 2, verse 7 to Esther chapter 9, verse 32. She, with her cousin, her cousin Mordecai, was instrumental in saving the lives of the black Jewish people who were in Persia, which is ancient Iran. Now, metaphysically speaking, Esther, Astia, right, she represents, she represents the dissolving, the dissolving power of spiritual love. This is an antidote. This is an antidote. You know, somebody's sick, they have some snake poison or whatever, they need a what? An antidote. So she, is, she represents that antidote for a dictatorial will. This is why we linked and we likened in a previous, a previous posting um, uh, Condoleezza Rice. People disagreed because they're just looking at the so-called politics, the outer. They're still caught up on the, the, the black and white paradigm of things. They cannot see, see the, 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 the colors, the fullness of the colors. They have been relegated to the black and white, you understand, the black and white Masonic floor, Freemasonic floor. They're not seeing the rainbow. They're not seeing the fullness of, 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 of the colors of things. So we liken um, 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 
uh, Condoleezza Rice, and even this uh, UN ambassador, who ironically also is named Rice, to these types of, of, of Esther in order to give, give a, an object lesson to the student to understand in context the real significance of what we have here in the scriptures so that one can see the scripture not as dead letters or dead words, but can see it in its spiritual life, these principles in manifestation and recognize our, our will and to make our wills obedient to good influences is to show the greatest wisdom. So Esther, she was the dissolving, represents the dissolving power of what? Spiritual love. Now, people say that God is not mentioned one time in the book of Esther. So some have, out of a religious uh, zealotry, have rejected the book of Esther because Esther does not mention the name of God one time in that book. There's a deeper story to that. Just because one doesn't mention God all the time does not mean that one is not in that true spiritual love of God. See, the religious zealots of um, whitewashed Christianity um, don't really rep recognize that because the Christianity that they are practicing basically is counterfeit because it does not recognize the true humanity of Jesus Christ as a black man. That all that they would accept of Jesus Christ in the Bible, they cannot accept that because in their hearts and minds, black is bad, black is evil. And in spite of everything else they know and do, they are not worshiping him in spirit and in truth. So therefore, when they say, Lord, Lord, he's going to say, I never knew you. Get away from me, ye what workers of iniquity, of rebellion. Because some would not accept Christ as black, even if, it, you know, even if it was proven to them, beyond any shadow of a doubt, to be true. They prefer to worship the work of their own hands instead of the true revelation of God and Christ that's revealed to his people, I and I, Rastafari. Sad as it may be, that is their choice. But Queen Esther had all of her relatives who are called in the story the Jews. So the Jews, in this sense, or Judah, as a line of the tribe of Judah, it represents the spiritual thoughts, the truly spiritual thoughts. They join her in a fast. So she calls for a fast amongst her people. And so the spiritual of her people, the Jews, the Judahites, Yehuda, Ihud, they join her in a fast. This means that we must deny. See, now the meaning of this metaphysically, what's applicative to us even in this, in this life and in our, in our lives, is that this fast, symbolically connected with Purim, it means that we too, I and I and I, must deny all selfish desires. You see, part of the reason why um, our, 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 our um, progress as the once lost but now found day to Israel, black folks, part of it is, 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 is um, frustrated because, because of the hate that hate produced, many of us get caught up in an extremism, you understand, extreme blackism, that still denies the fullness of the picture, you see. And we have to, you know, we have to fast, fast from racism. You, you know what I mean? Fast from that. Yes, we know that it began black and that they've been lying to us. You understand? But let's not blackwash in order to get even with whitewash. So we got to fast. You understand? We got to fast. We must deny all selfish desires out of our love before we use it in softening the imperious will. So we have to fast, uh, deny all selfish desires out of our love, out of jaw love even, before we use jaw love in softening the imperious, the imperious will. The imperious will then was, was, was Persia, was imperial Persia. And this time, Basically, it is white supremacy or the so-called New World Order, or the Illuminati, or whatever other name one might be more comfortable in calling it. When this consciousness of love stands in the inner court of our being, we cannot help ascending 
acceding, acceding to its demands. We cannot help acceding to its demand. Unselfish love is fearless because of its forgetfulness of self.